how much one-on-one -on -one experience with coaching do I recommend before transitioning to a group program? Do you have to start with one-on-ones before you can transition to group? Good morning. Welcome back to another Monday through Friday episode of Get Ready With Me. So just ask how much one-on-one -on -one experience with coaching do I recommend before transitioning to a group program? Here's the deal. I'm not like other coaches in this where I might disagree with what other coaches are saying. And I personally think zero. You need zero experience coaching people one-on-one -on -one before you can create a group coaching program or a course. Let me explain why. Okay. First of all, if you have one-on-one -on -one clients already, high five. That's amazing. And insert certain aspects, you could be one step ahead of someone who doesn't have one-on-one -on -one clients. And let me explain why. If you have one-on-one -on -one clients already in person or online, you have the ability to get more feedback from the clients that you're working with and speed wise faster because you're currently working with clients. That feedback turns into tweaks and iterations. It turns into enhancements, changes, adding, deleting. What am I talking about? Your signature like proprietary method. So when you're working with someone, whether you're working with them in a group capacity or a one-on-one -on -one setting, you're going to walk them through your process, your proprietary method your system. And when you first start with one-on-one -on -one clients, what you're really helping yourself do is come up with what is that proprietary system? What is that framework? Because most of us take our clients when we have one-on-one -on -one clients, we generally take them through the same steps. And so by working with one-on-one -on -one clients, you have the ability to like refine your method while at the same time, simultaneously getting feedback from them, hearing what's working, what's not seeing what's working, what's not. And then also one step further, that feedback then obviously can turn into client testimony case studies and social proof where you're getting people results. So if you have one-on-one -on -one clients, that's awesome. Now, the reason I think that I don't think that you have to start with one-on-one -on -one clients, first of all, you might not want to have one-on-one -on -one clients in your business model ever. At Digital Business Evolution, my company, we always teach people to build their business around their life, not their life around their business. So if you're a person like me the last year and a half who does not want one-on-one -on -one clients, I don't want that in my schedule. I don't want that on my calendar. I love working with people. I've always had one-on-one -on -one clients, but over the last year and a half, I chose because I always think about my life first. The season that I'm in, I didn't want to have more calls on my calendar. I didn't want to have more proximity to people. And I'm very fortunate to say right now, it was like, money doesn't matter. Like if you're willing to pay me, that's great. I'm just not interested in that being part of my day-to-day -day life right now. And so for this season, I chose the last year and a half to not have one-on-one -on -one clients. So if you're looking at your model, your business structure and your life, and you're going, I don't really want one-on-one -on -one clients. Well, then why the heck do you have to start with one-on-one -on -one clients before you can transition? If you don't want to be the person or the business that's trading their time for money hour to hour to hour, then why would you start with one-on-one -on -one clients? If you know that you want to create a group, then I say go for it. Throw people into a group right away. What's the difference between you working with people one-on-one -on -one five hours out of your day or working with five people one -on in a small group five at the same time? You're still communicating with them. You're still figuring out your process and your framework. They're still giving you feedback you're still going to get client results and tweaks. And this weird myth that clients can't get results in a group setting is such BS. And I have thousands of screenshots and social proof of people saying, actually being in a group showed them what's possible. Being in a group gave them accountability and support that they weren't going to get. Otherwise being in a group connected them to like-minded people who were going through what they were going through. Cause don't forget oftentimes where you are today is not where your current client is or where your ideal client is. It's where they want to be. But a lot of times when you are further along in your transformation journey, whether it's weight loss, fertility, building a business, the gap between where you are and where your ideal client is, gets bigger and bigger and bigger over time. And the bigger that gap gets, the less relatable you become, the less you actually remember how it feels to be in their shoes. Being in a group setting gives them a community of like-minded people that are their peers. Of course, it's great to have a mentor or a coach or someone guiding you who's a step or two ahead, but to have someone in this, in your shoes, who are your peers, peers is a whole different ballpark. So we've had so many clients tell us over the years, both in our programs and then in the programs that they're creating, that being in a group setting, small or big, is actually far more beneficial than being alone. It makes them feel less alone. There are things that you can do in your group coaching program or your course as well to safeguard against somebody feeling lost or like they're falling through the cracks. We have dozens of things that we do in all of our courses and group coaching programs to safeguard against that. We put bumpers in because we know that it's not a matter 
matter of if someone falls off track, it's when they fall off track. And here's the thing. I think that there's always going to be extenuating circumstances in any situation, a particular niche, a particular transformation, a particular coach. It might make sense for you to have one-on-ones. So we get a lot of pushback on this where we have a lot of clients that are in the health and wellness field. And so we have a lot of registered dietitians, functional nutritionists. When people are in a transformation that's more vulnerable, they might not be willing to share in a group setting. And so we get a lot of clients who, for example, are fertility experts. My clients aren't going to want to talk about their fertility journey with other people, or they might be embarrassed about it or something like that. Now, here's the thing. What about a hybrid? But if it is the case for whatever reason, then what if you ran a hybrid model where you have a group coaching program? It could be small group. But what if you did a hybrid where then you also offered some sort of like one-on-one aspect to it where they can phone a friend, right? They can SOS call you or once a month or once through every phase or once every other week. Maybe it's not even you. Maybe it's a coach that you have or a dietitian that you have on your team or whatever that might be where they can do individual check-ins. Maybe it's not a call. Maybe there's a check-in assessment that they send via email and they do personalized one-on-one check-ins. Again, we get this a lot with our RDs who do gut testing where they send off stool samples and take them back or they're doing blood work. Of course, that stuff is still going to be custom. It's still going to be one-on-one, but that doesn't mean that in a group setting, we can't come in and all have the same Voxer or the same Facebook group where we're cheering each other on. It doesn't mean that we can't still have the same portal of videos that we're going to watch and workbook pages that we're going to go through. It doesn't mean that we can't still get on the same coaching calls together to ask questions while in addition to that, having a hybrid model where, yeah, my stool sample is my stool sample and it's going to get back particular results. And then you might put me on a custom protocol. Most often the questions that your clients are going to be asking are not actually that custom. And the things that you're going to be teaching them again are not actually that custom. So they might be on a custom meal plan or supplement plan or have a particular workout protocol, but talking about if you should stretch before your workout or after applies to everybody. I'm sending you your custom plan through email this week. So make sure that you read through that thoroughly. Like there's always a way to customize it. So I'm just in the camp of doing this group thing because I see so much more success for the person going through the transformation, the client, if you will. I see so much more success for clients when we have the village. It takes a village and anybody in here knows that any transformation that hasn't happened yet oftentimes hasn't happened yet because we, the human, get in our own way. We don't have the accountability. We don't have the resources. We don't have the support and we don't have the people around us to help us get there. So I'm a huge advocate for group coaching. I'm a huge advocate for courses. Now, it is your job to position it appropriately. So if your ideal client thinks that they need to have one-on-one coaching, it's your job to showcase to them why they actually don't and how being in a group could be more beneficial. And yet the number one thing for six years that our clients, almost six years that our clients have been saying about our signature program in power is the community, our masterminds, the community, our mid-tier programs, the community, our self-study programs, the community. Because once you're in our world, you're in our world in our community forever and we treat you like that. We don't treat you like a number. I'm gonna wrap today with this question. I know I only talked about one thing, but the question was, do you have to start with one-on-ones before you can transition to group? And my answer is just absolutely no. No, you don't. If you have them, great. If you want them, awesome. If you will feel more comfortable doing that first, go for it. But it's like that quote, the time is gonna pass regardless, right? Time is gonna pass no matter what. And so you can spend the time either tweaking, refining, finessing, and figuring out with a small group of people, two, three, four, five, ten, or you can figure it out with individual people and it's just more of your time. Either way, the time is going to pass. I'm so grateful for you being here and I end every episode the same way. So thank you so much. As always, cheers to your evolution.